Today I'm going to be building a gaming PC and here's a quick sneak peek of what it looks like once it's been built. This is a nice looking computer where the RGB lighting can be set to any colour such as white or red, green, purple, blue and so on. It can also be set to many different lighting modes as well but obviously it's not all about the looks so I'll be showing you how to build this computer and then how well it can handle playing Cyberpunk 2077. So that's a quick look at the finished build. Let's look at the parts I'll be using. The case is a white Corsair IQ 465X RGB case, which comes with three pre-installed RGB fans at the front. And we have an ASUS Prime Z490A motherboard, an Intel Core i7-10700K processor, 16 gigabytes of Corsair RGB RAM running at 3200 megahertz, an RTX 3070 graphics card by Gigabyte, three LL120 RGB fans by Corsair, two fan splitters, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe solid state drive by Western Digital, a four terabyte hard disk drive also by Western Digital. The CPU cooler is an Arctic Freezer 34 eSports single fan edition, and finally, the power supply is the white version of Corsair's RM750X. So here's all the parts at a glance. I'll be showing you how to build this computer, but I won't be going into such minute detail as I normally do. So this will be more like a quick guide for a change. So let's make a start by putting the processor into the motherboard. We're going to be installing the processor into the motherboard just here. So just lift up this arm and the lid. Then line up the small triangle on the processor with the dot on the motherboard. And put down the lid and the processor arm. And take off the plastic top. Next we need to take out these two screws and take off the solid state drive heat shield. Now we're going to put in the solid state drive and as you can see here it's keyed so it can only go in one way. So let's slide that in at a slight angle. Then push this down and screw it into place just here. Now you don't have to screw this down too tightly and once you've done that we can put the heat shield back on. So first let's take off the plastic and then put it down and screw it into place here and here. So let's put the memory sticks just here on the motherboard. Take one of the 8GB sticks of memory and put it into the slot that's one away from the processor. Take the second 8 gigabyte stick and put it into the slot that's furthest away from the processor. Now we're going to install the CPU cooler. This is easier to do when the motherboard is still outside of the computer case. So we're going to do this now while it's still on the table. The parts on the left we won't be using, but we'll be using all of the parts shown on the right. So the first thing to do is put the back plate onto the back of the motherboard. So now we have the back plate installed. You can see it from the front of the motherboard in these four places here just sticking through. So now we're going to install these bolts in those four places. So you just tighten these bolts by hand. You don't need any tools for this. Next, take the fan off by removing this metal clip. Then take the metal brackets and install one onto this side. and one onto this side. Okay. 
Next, add some thermal paste to the processor. And spread the paste so that you have a thin layer of paste on the processor. And once you spread the thermal paste, put the fan back onto the heatsink and take this label off. Then put the cooler down onto the bolts with the fan nearest the memory. By the way, there's a plastic label to take off here, here and here, so we take those off now. So next we're going to take off this side panel by removing these four screws here. And we also need to remove the other side panel by taking out these two screws. So next we can install the motherboard just here and these cables are in the way so I'm just going to untie those. And now we can put the motherboard into the case. Now you can screw the motherboard down just here and there's another screw here, here, one here, one there, one there and three at the bottom. Now we can install the hard disk drive into the back of the computer case just here. So let's take out this bottom tray, install the hard drive into the bracket and put it back into the case. So I've taken the front panel connectors and I've pulled them through this hole just here. And these need to be plugged into the motherboard on the pins on the right bottom corner of the motherboard. And the reset switch can be plugged in just below the power switch. Take the USB cable from the back of the case, pull it through the same hole, then plug it into the motherboard just here. Now find the cable marked audio from the back of the case and thread it through the hole just here. Then plug it in just here on the motherboard. Now find the USB connector and plug it in just here on the motherboard next to the memory. Now we can install the power supply into the case and as you can see the power supply doesn't have any cables plugged into it yet. So we're going to take these cables here and plug them in just here into the power supply. Now we can plug the power supply into the back of the case just here and it will go this way round with the fan facing down. So next we'll be installing these RGB fans and one will be installed at the back of the case and then two at the top of the case. So let me explain how the fans are set up. All the fans I'm using in this computer are the same. That is, they are all Corsair LL120 fans. Each fan has two cables. So let's get a close up of these connectors. 
the slim connector shown on the left will plug into the lighting node core, which can be found at the back of the computer case. The fan connector shown on the right will be connected to a fan splitter. Then with the second fan, its slimmer connector will be plugged into the lighting node core and its other connector into the fan splitter. Then the third fan, its slimmer connector goes here and its other connector into the fan splitter. Then the other end of the fan splitter will be plugged into the motherboard. Then you do exactly the same thing with the other three fans and that's why we have two fan splitters. So screw the fans into place, then connect them up to the fan splitters and the lighting node core. So next we can install the graphics card just here on the motherboard. So first of all we need to take out this bracket and this one as well. Just unscrew it. And then install the graphics card into this slot just here. And then screw it into place. Then plug in the 6 pin and 8 pin PCIe power connectors. Then all that's left to do is to tidy the cables at the back of the case and put the side panels back on. And here it is completely finished. I gave the motherboard a BIOS update, installed Windows 10 and installed all the necessary drivers. At the time of this recording, generally speaking, this computer is good for gaming at 1440p resolution or below and for playing some games at 4K. When this computer is running at idle, or if you're just doing some light work, such as browsing the internet, this computer is very quiet. By the way, the graphics card's fans and the power supply's fan only spin up when needed. The white case really shows off the RGB lighting with its reflective surfaces, which just enhances the colour that little bit more. So let's see how well this computer gets on with a demanding game such as Cyberpunk 2077. So I set the resolution to 1440p and in the graphics section I chose Ultra Settings, set the field view to 90 and turned off chromatic aberration and motion blur as I didn't want those settings to make this game look blurry. Then I turned on all the ray tracing options with ray traced lighting set to Ultra and DLSS set to balanced. By the way, I recorded this by pointing the camera at the monitor so that nothing will affect the frames per second in this game. So the game might not look as sharp as it does when you're seeing it first hand, but the frames per second are accurate. Anyway, let's talk about how this computer performs when running this game. In many areas, the frames per second will often stay in the 60s, as you can see here. And the temperatures are very good with the graphics card running in the mid 60s and the CPU running in the low 60s. When you're in the more graphically intense areas, such as places like this, the FPS can sometimes go into the 50s, but if I didn't have the FPS counter on, I most likely wouldn't have even noticed any difference. The fact that the GPU is running close to 100% shows that this computer's graphics card is being well optimised. And the CPU isn't being pushed that hard, so it's easily coping with it all. As soon as you come away from a busy area, the frames per second will often go back into the 60s again. As for driving, most of the time I was averaging around 60 FPS. Whatever I did and wherever I went in this game, it always ran smoothly and the graphics looked amazing. When it came to playing this game in HD resolution, I didn't change any of the settings and the frames per second were often in the 80s in many areas. Sometimes many more FPS. In the 70s when amongst the graphically demanding areas. And around an average of 75 in the driving parts of this game.
Playing this game in 4K, I had to change the DLSS to ultra performance to get an average of 60 frames per second overall. But of course you could change the settings in other ways to reach 60 FPS at 4K, such as turning off ray tracing and setting DLSS to balanced. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.